Have you ever been told don't backpedal or turn sideways on your overhead? Backpedaling is certainly one of the most common flaws I see. It's one of the worst things you can do on an overhead and it's not only dangerous, it's also a very slow way of moving and will really limit your power. My name is Jeremy Malfay. If you enjoy this video, please give me a like, subscribe to the channel, and click that notification bell if you haven't already. Since creating these progressions, I've had success with every person I've done these progressions with, and you will too. It's time to fix your overhead footwork once and for all. Enjoy the video. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail about the other footwork patterns regarding the overhead, but I think it's important to understand that there is an exception to it being okay to backpedal on the overhead. And that is when you are running around what would be a high backhand volley or backhand overhead, and you run, you run around that backhand and you hit a forehand overhead, okay? So for example, if I'm standing like this, I see that the lob goes to my left, I'm a righty, I'm gonna backpedal to get to that ball. However, there's no exception when you're moving backwards, you should never ever backpedal, as I said. It's a big breakdown in technique. It's gonna cause you to really encourage the wrong grip and uh, just about everything that's gonna go wrong with the technique if you backpedal. Because if you backpedal, you're not gonna be able to turn the body, you're not gonna get that coil that you need to uncoil and release that effortless energy into the ball. Now, there is two basic footwork patterns uh, that are common. We already talked about backpedaling is okay only when you're moving to your left to hit your forehand overhead so that you avoid a backhand, uh, high backhand volley or backhand overhead. Much more offensive to hit that forehand overhead. Now, when moving back, you want to use a shuffle step. So watch my feet here. I think everyone knows what a side shuffle is. Shuffle step when the ball is one or two steps away from you. So you're moving back, the ball's one or two steps, sometimes three steps will get you there. Um, you just wanna be able to set your feet prior to hitting the ball. So if you're not able to set your feet, then you should have done the, what I'm gonna talk about now, which is the crossover steps. Crossover steps is basically like you're running, you're running in this direction. If I'm running to this blue curtain here, but I uh, have my upper body turned facing this way and my eyes up and forward so that I can track the incoming ball. So crossover steps is, okay, a little bit like running. All right, so to cover short distances, one, two, maybe three steps in time, you're gonna shuffle. If it's more than three steps, you're definitely gonna wanna use the crossover step. Imagine if you could cover deep lobs, not just short lobs, you're going to be much more confident than that. People aren't going to lob you so much, and you're going to be crushing that uh, what was a defensive overhead now is an overhead smash that's finishing the point for you. So first progression here, no racket, no ball. You're simply going to, we're going to isolate just the footwork, and you're going to get in your athletic position low and wide, and then when you're ready, you're going to turn. Make sure that your eyes are up and forward, and of course your hips are perpendicular to the net. So I'm gonna do it again. I'd like you to start slow at first. Keep the eyes up, right, at where the uh, lob would be. And just keep in mind the footwork. So the reason you don't have a racket, the reason you're not using your arms, so we can focus just on the footwork, make sure you get that right. Try a few reps of that, start in slow motion. Just start here, you can look at my feet to make sure I'm doing it right. Video yourself in any of these progressions to ensure you're doing it right. And uh, once again, take a look at this. Now, I can go fast here. So work your way slow, movement back, no racket, no ball, and then do it fast. That's the first progression. We're gonna do one more progression without the ball in the picture. And this is gonna be the same as the first progression. However, you're gonna have a racket in your dominant hand. You're gonna start in what's commonly known as the trophy position. Your non-dominant arm is stretched up as high as it can go. So if you look at me from the side view, my non-dominant hand is directly above my non-dominant shoulder. The tip of the racket is pointing towards the ceiling. 
Okay, and also notice how my eyes are looking over my left or my front shoulder. I'm not looking like this. Okay, watch my left arm here. I'm looking over my left shoulder. This shows that I turned. If I'm not looking over my left shoulder as I am now, that shows that I did not turn enough. You can actually see my chest a little bit right now. So the non-dominant arm should be angled slightly to the right as a righty. Once you are in this trophy position, you're going to slowly do the crossover steps and make sure that you keep your eyes up and forward. A lot of people are uncomfortable moving backwards while looking forward. So you need to get comfortable doing that by doing it. Now, the next uh, part of this progression is just simply doing the same thing but doing a little faster. So I start in my trophy position, I keep my eyes up and forward, and then I try to move quickly backwards while keeping my hips perpendicular to the net. In this progression, you're gonna want to have a partner or a tennis coach feed you lobs, ideally. You could also do this with the ball machine as I am right now or you could even use a wall in which you would hit the ball down into the ground prior to the ball coming up and hitting the wall which will create that lob that you're looking for. You could even have somebody to underhand toss you a ball if they're not very skilled enough to be able to feed you a lob. So initially you don't want a whole lot of movement but you want to move at least a step or two backwards so if you can get uh, the ball machine or your coach or partner to feed you a lob that's not too challenging, um, this would be ideal. So what you're going to do is you're going to catch the ball with your non-dominant hand and you're going to start in your ready position. When that lob goes up, you're going to turn, get in that trophy position, get the crossover footwork that we talked about, and then catch the ball with your non-dominant hand and when you catch the ball, by the way, it's not a big deal if you don't catch the ball, it's just the fact that you try to catch the ball. And when you catch the ball, or when the ball hits your hand, you want your non-dominant hand to be in the same place as it should be when you're in the trophy position. So ideally, you wouldn't be catching the ball like this. You see how my left arm is moving all over the place? That shows that you did not track the ball well. It's not a big deal, but would like you to think about the ball a little bit now that the ball is in the picture, in addition to thinking about your footwork. So take a look here. I'm going to receive a lob, and then I'm going to catch the ball. As you can see, I, I had the remote in my hand, I forgot to click the button. So as you can see, I caught the ball with my non-dominant hand, and I caught it in exactly where I wanted to. I didn't have to adjust my hand. It's going to take a little bit of practice. Now, after you get a hang of this, you get a few reps of getting the correct footwork. Again, I always encourage people to video themselves because, as I always say, what you're actually doing is often different than what it feels like you're doing. Now, you're going to add some extra movement again and just make the lob a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to start closer. I'm going to start closer here to challenge myself, see if I can keep the correct footwork. Watch my trophy position, and I caught the ball right in the ideal strike zone. So, that progression, you're gonna to wanna to spend more time than the first two progressions, because now that the ball is in the picture, the ball is a distraction. As soon as the ball is in play, players go back to their old habits very, very often. So. If you do find that you are going back to your old footwork of backpedaling, or sometimes people shuffle when they should be doing crossover steps. Crossover steps is the fastest form of footwork in this situation. If you find yourself doing something wrong with the footwork, just go back to the previous progression, spend more time on that before you get to this progression. Now once you've had success in those first three progressions, it's time to finally hit the ball. However, you're going to alternate between hitting the ball, and the next one you're going to catch the ball as you did in the previous progression. So take a look, this first overhead I'm going to hit it, and then I'm going to catch, I'll give you four here. And this one I'm going to catch, right, make sure that my footwork is correct, and one more time. 
back to the catch. All right, so depending on how easy or difficult this progression is, you can have your partner give you a little more challenging feeds or less challenging. In this progression, each time your partner has fed the lob, your partner's gonna say out loud, either hit or catch when the lob is at its apex. And you are going to do whatever your partner has set. So if the lob is at its apex, your partner says hit, you're going to hit the ball. If the lob is at its apex and your partner says catch, then you have to catch the ball just as we did in the previous couple progressions. So because I'm using the ball machine, he's not much of a talker, so I'm gonna say it out loud myself so that you get a feel for it. But again, your partner will of course be saying it and you're not gonna know whether they're gonna say catch or hit because they should say it at random. So check this out. <clears throat> catch. So I catch the ball. Hit. That uh, overhead wasn't my best. I couldn't decide the last moment what I was gonna do. But you get the picture. They say hit or catch when their feet is at its apex and you have to do that hit or catch or whatever they just said. In this last progression, you will hit every ball as an overhead and the feeder mixes up the depth and direction of the lobs. Your partner should gradually increase the difficulty of the feeds. I like to feed the ball so deep so that the only way they can move fast enough to get to the ball is if they do the correct footwork. Doing this will encourage the right footwork. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, this is Jeremy with Fundamental Tennis. I appreciate the support. Give me a like. Please share with someone who may find this video valuable. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell button if you haven't already. Uh, I look forward to next week's video. I hope you do as well. Give me a comment. Let me know what you think of the video. And uh, let me know if you have any questions, concerns, thoughts, comments. I'm happy to talk with everyone and anyone. Uh, thank you again and see you next week.